This short film demonstrates blood culture collection using aseptic non-touch technique or ANTT. ANTT guidelines focus on the sequence of infection control steps necessary to ensure clinical procedures are performed aseptically. Using ANTT to standardise aseptic technique across large clinical workforces has shown to significantly help reduce healthcare-associated infection. When used to standardise blood culture collection, ANTT has also been shown to reduce sample contamination. As a result, ANTT has been endorsed as a best practice example of aseptic technique by EPIC2 UK and the Australian Commission on Safety and Quality in Healthcare. Problems with practice Sepsis is a major cause of death and blood cultures are the single most important method for detecting it. However, contaminated blood cultures often hinder the diagnosis of bacteremia for sick patients. They also significantly increase hospital costs. Contaminated blood samples are caused by poor standards of aseptic technique. Audits performed or collated nationally by the Association of Safe Aseptic Practice have identified a number of problematic issues. For example, aseptic fields are often not used to protect the puncture site or the essential equipment. Reusable tourniquets are often used. These can contaminate the procedure because they are often used between patients and microbiologically they are often very dirty. Puncture sites are often contaminated by repalpation of the vein just prior to skin puncture. Cleaning of the puncture site is often insufficient. Even though blood culture collection is an invasive procedure which involves significant exposure to blood, gloves are often omitted. These and other practice issues are addressed in this ANTT guideline for blood culture collection. Principles of ANTT All ANTT guidelines are based upon a practice framework that teaches eight foundation principles of safe aseptic practice. Healthcare workers using ANTT can view this framework at www.antt.org.uk The fundamental principle or rule of ANTT is simple. Aseptic key parts must only come into contact with other aseptic key parts or key sites. To ensure this, the practitioner must identify and then protect at all times the key parts and key sites of any procedure. In blood culture collection, key parts are the parts of the equipment that will come into direct or indirect contact with the blood sample or the puncture site. There are two approaches to ANTT, standard ANTT or surgical ANTT. The main difference is the management of the aseptic field. In surgical ANTT, in order to ensure asepsis, the main aseptic field needs to be managed critically, just like a key part is managed critically. In standard ANTT, the main aseptic field is not required to be managed critically, but is still utilised to promote an aseptic working environment. Blood culture collection is performed using standard ANTT. This is because there are very few key parts and only a small puncture site or key site. A general aseptic field is sufficient to promote a safe working area as the key parts can easily be protected at all times by caps and covers, which serve as excellent critical microaseptic fields. When understanding these core principles, the healthcare worker will further promote and ensure asepsis by effective hand decontamination, 
using sterilised equipment, cleaning existing key parts or key sites to a standard which render them aseptic prior to use, and using a non-touch technique. General Guidance Before we look at the ANTT guideline, let's first note some general blood culture guidance as recommended by the Department of Health. For suspected bacteremia, two sets of blood cultures from separate sites is generally recommended. Existing peripheral lines, cannulae or sites immediately above peripheral lines should not be used to collect blood culture samples. Only use a central line for sampling if it is suspected as a cause of infection and collect peripheral blood first. When using a central venous catheter, discard the first 5 to 10 mils, or according to local policy. The use of blood collection adapter caps without wing blood collection sets is not recommended. The ANTT guideline for blood culture collection. During blood culture collection, there are two main objectives for ANTT. One, to protect the patient from infection and two, to protect the blood sample from contamination. The biggest risk in achieving these objectives is in fact you, the healthcare worker, as infection or contamination are caused by a number of sources involving practice. Consequently, this ANTT guideline is organised around five critical steps. These are equipment assembly, Step 7. Scrubbing the culture bottle injectable bungs. Step 13. Skin preparation. Step 14. Puncture of the vein. And step 15. Inoculating the sample into the blood bottles. In ANTT, the maintenance of asepsis is helped by sequencing the low risk or decontamination steps immediately prior to the most critical steps. Adhering to the sequence of the guideline is therefore very important and mandatory. Let's now run through the guideline. Before commencing the collection, verbally consent the patient and perform a visual vein check. Ask the patient to wash their arm and hand with soap and water. Or wash the arm yourself. Steps 1, 2 and 3. In a preparation area and with clean hands, clean a plastic tray according to local policy. Whilst it is drying, gather all equipment. Clean hands effectively with alcohol hand rub or soap and water. Step 4. Assemble the equipment aseptically by protecting the key parts using non-touch technique. Key parts should be protected at all times using protective items such as caps and covers. These serve as excellent critical microaseptic fields. Step 5. Proceed directly to the patient's location and put on a disposable apron. Label the bottles carefully. Step 6. Clean your hands effectively with alcohol, hand rub or soap and water. Step 7. Remove the tops of the culture bottles and scrub the injectable bungs for 15 seconds using one side of a fully opened 2% chlorhexidine and 70% alcohol wipe. Use non-touch technique to prevent contact with the injectable bungs. Step 8. Provide the patient with a pillow for comfort and to help stabilise the arm. Place a sterilised drape under the patient's arm. This serves as a general aseptic field around the puncture site. Steps 9, 
10, 11 and 12. Apply a disposable tourniquet and palpate the vein. Release the tourniquet but leave it in situ. Clean hands with an alcohol hand rub or soap and water and allow to dry. Retighten the tourniquet and apply non sterile gloves. Step 13 Proper disinfection of the collection site is probably the most single important step in preventing false positive blood culture results. Therefore, Clean the skin with a 2% chlorhexidine and 70% alcohol applicator. The applicator will help ensure a non-touch technique. Activate the applicator and gently press it against the skin. Once the solution is visible, you use up and down and back and forth strokes for 30 seconds. It is essential the skin is allowed to dry fully. Step 14. Clamp the vein with your gloved fingers below the puncture site. It is essential you do not repalpate the puncture site, but if it is necessary to do so, you must re-clean the site with a fresh applicator before skin puncture. Puncture the vein. Step 15. Inoculate the blood into the culture bottles taking care not to touch the injectable bungs by using non-touch technique. Release tourniquet. Step 16. Apply sterilised gauze over the site and withdraw the needle. Ask the patient to apply pressure to the gauze. Step 17. Dispose of all sharps safely. Steps 18, 19 and 20. Proceed directly to a decontamination area. Clean the tray according to local policy. Remove your apron and gloves and clean your hands immediately. Note well, due to the humidity created between gloves and skin, your hands will be particularly dirty after wearing gloves. It is therefore imperative that you wash your hands immediately after glove removal and before touching the environment. Summary. Blood culture collection is a vital investigation for very sick patients. Contamination of samples is a common problem and places patients at significant risk. Adherence to this ANTT guideline will ensure safe and accurate collection of blood samples. Thank you for watching this short demonstration of aseptic non-touch technique. ANTT clinical guidelines are freely available from www.antt.org.uk Thank you for your support.